What's up, guys? Happy Monday. It is ACC Tournament Week. Women's basketball, we've got a great one. And, of course, we have to do a major episode to talk about this. Now, you might be looking around saying, where the heck is KG? How are we going to do this without her? It's all good. She's on this episode. She's everywhere on this episode, just not the intro. She had to catch a flight. She had to get back home. You will see later in the episode. She almost missed it, but we got through. We made it happen. She made her flight. Everything's going to be fine. She will be in Greensboro later this week, giving you all the coverage you could ever think of. Uh, but it is time, and we had to do a big episode here. And speaking of, we have the Queens of the Castle joining us, Liz Kitley, Georgia Amor, two of the best, if not the best duo in the entire country. We have a great conversation, great sit down with them. And then the freshman phenom from Notre Dame, Hannah Hidalgo, who is just on fire. Uh, funny enough, these two played each other and the freshman got the best of the two you know, seniors there. It was incredible. Great game. I think shades of things to come for this tournament in regards to who knows what to expect. You're going to see great players making plays and making things happen. So we've got all that in store for you. And then at the very end, KG breaks the tournament down. Everything that she thinks is going to happen, she gives you some dark horses. She gives you her pick, who thinks she she thinks is going to win, and then some players to watch if you're new to this and maybe watch us from just a football perspective. She's got it all covered. So grateful for your time. Jump in with us here quickly. A message from our friends over at Ingles, and then we'll get to the interviews. Let's go. Did you know that Ingles sells more organics than any other store, or that they run their own dairy, or that they only serve USDA choice and prime meat? Did you know that they have more local craft beer than any place else, or that they have energy smart stores, or that they professionally slice and package imported cheese from Europe? Did you know about their giant international aisle, local farm partnerships, curbside pickup, wine department, or that they donate 3,956 meals a day to local food banks? Well, now you do. It's all in the bag. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. All right, guys, we have the queens. The queens of Castle are joining us today, Liz Kitley and Georgia Amor. Hello, queens. Welcome to the pod. Thanks Hello. for having us. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> An absolute pleasure, yes. Well, Liz has been on before, Georgia. This is your, yeah. your first time. Welcome. I know. Welcome. I know. That's for everything. I'm not mad. <laughs> well, you know, we were just trying to get in touch with your people, and you've, you've had some big-time interviews lately. You've been on Haley Jones's pod, you know, things like that. Yeah. You're big time. Yeah. Well, okay. Speaking of big time, guys, I was there on Sunday, college game day in Virginia Tech, in Castle. It was electric. Um, why don't we start with Liz? Because she's taller. What did you guys think of that? That atmosphere was just unbelievable. Like, what did you guys think? Uh, definitely unbelievable. Um, me and Kayla were kind of talking about it. We felt like we got like inserted into a movie or something. Like it wasn't our actual like experiences. Um, just because I I just never would have had this in my imagination. Even even last year, like it never would have occurred to me that this could happen. Um, but it did, and we got to go on set. And you know, I think the most memorable thing is just the roar of the fans and the passion and the signs and the energy. Um, that was just incredible. And like my my biggest takeaway too is that. You know, when people would ask like what my favorite memory at Virginia Tech is, it would be like, oh, ACC Championship Final Four. Like, those are just so easy to list off. But now, like, that day was so special. Oh, it's wow. right up there in that conversation. Um, like, seriously, one of the most special days of my life so far. Yeah. I would also add that, like, the fact that, like, having game day there was absolutely great, like, phenomenal. But the fact that that game was, like, sold out before people knew that game day was coming. Like, yeah. It's kind of like really cool to know that we probably would have had that crowd regardless if that crew was there or not. Like they they weren't just showing up because they were going to be on ESPN. Like the passion and stuff that like these people have brought to us like the past couple of years, like even like since last year has just been like incredible. But yeah, for sure, highlight of my college career for sure. That's amazing. I, I, I just, you know, you, you never take it for granted, but when you're in that moment, it's just so fun. And, and the, the things that you see, the signs, the people, and again, you guys are so blessed because you have an unbelievable home crowd. And, and it feels like, you know, those fans have been very supportive, very energetic, very exciting. But George, I'll start with you here in regards to just taking the game to another level, especially in this era that we are where people are watching and people are paying attention. Is that cool for y'all? Like, do, do you feel some type of, weight or burden with that or is it just like dude i'm balling and these people love to watch i mean any pressure is a privilege obviously we we carry huge expectations but i think the position that you know especially liz and iron is like we've been through this before mm -hmm. like last year we've had big games yeah. this year we've had big games and you know i think 
it's fair to say we have pretty high expectations put on us every single night. And I think, you know, Liz especially has carried it with such great like, dignity. Like, she's just so consistent. Like, it, like, I don't know. The more you think about it, the more you freak out about it. So I don't like to do a whole lot of thinking. I just do. <laughs> I like that. I, like I can't that. speak to Liz. I don't know what she thinks about that. But. Well, yeah. <laughs> how about it, Liz? Because, I, again, you know, Georgia spelled it out really well for there. There is a lot of expectation. I mean, there's, you know, you're the go-to. You know, and I think back to that game winner, the, the amazing pass, the setup, the fadeaway shot. Um, when it's time to go, you know, we're, we're getting you the ball. What's your mindset in, in kind of those moments and big, big time moments like game day coming to town? Yeah, I think, you know, a few years ago, it would have freaked me out, but I think especially knowing that this is my last time around, um, if anything, my number one emotion is just like feeling lucky. Like I just feel lucky to be in the position that I am. Um, I feel lucky that I've had, you know, this relationship with Coach Brooks that has made me the player that I am. I feel lucky that I'm playing in a time when women's basketball is, uh, its popularity is increasing at such a rapid rate. Um, I feel lucky to be in Blacksburg where the people are just incredible and loyal and will stick by you no matter, you know, maybe the ref was right on that call, but it doesn't matter. Like, they're going to yell at them if it's too far away. Um, so, if anything, I just feel super, super grateful and, um, you know, if, if, if I'm the best option at the time for the team or whatever, whatever the team needs uh, in that moment, then, you know, it's, it's just a good opportunity. I love y'all's gratitude, but you've also earned it. So <laughs> keep, keep that in mind. Um, when you look at you guys right now, it, it feels like you're peaking similar to last year. It's an eerily similar situation um, with the Duke game and then going into now. So w- would you guys agree with that? And what has changed? If you look back at Iowa, you look back at LSU, I mean, I know it's getting Eck and Sumio and all these players involved, but is it fair to say you guys are peaking? Let, let's start with uh, Liz on this one. Um, to be honest, yeah, I think I literally have deja vu from last year. Like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but it's like, it is eerily similar. Like, it's so strange. Um, and I think we knew that it was going to happen. Like, I knew the team we were in November wasn't going to be the team we were in February or March. Um, but... I mean, you said it, it's just like the the growth of the players and um, the way we've come together. Do I think we're peaking? I mean, we've been like steadily increasing every game. So I like to think that we're not tapering off just quite yet. Um, we have a few more weeks uh, to still continue to build chemistry, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but, you know, if, if we continue to, to shoot the ball well and be connected on defense, that's when we're just like a really, really, really hard team to beat. Yeah, I don't think we're doing anything like extraordinary I think everyone really has just settled into their roles and they're excelling at them like we're such an unselfish group that it's like you know Matilda knows that without her hitting shots we can't be great I know that without me setting everyone up like we can't be great like everyone knows that their roles are so important Mm -hmm. and I don't think like it's not like anyone well I was gonna say it's not like anyone scoring 40 but Liz might (laughs) I think we're just we're clicking so well for sure um but as Liz said you know it's it's only growing because there's no way we're tapering. Yeah. What what, what kind of goes into that? I mean, is it just confidence in your game, Georgia? Is it, you know, extra work? Because, you know, we do see these ebbs and flows in a season and to keep, keep climbing each and every week, each and every game. I mean, it is hard to do. It's hard to keep up that level of intensity, that level of expectation to meet that. So it, what is, I guess, the, the secret sauce for you guys that you can accomplish this now two years in a row? I think it might, it, for me, honestly, it's mindset because I think, you know, Liz and I are pretty always consistent with how we, you know, go and work out or like get extra shots up and everything. But like, we're also at that age where it might be a little too uh, detrimental on the knees to um work out for however many hours a day. So I think really our mentality has changed. Um, more critical thinking. I think our mentality is, you know, the hunters, like, yeah, we may be on a winning streak or yeah, we may be number one, but we're still fighting for stuff too. Like there's always something to fight for. Um, and I think the the chemistry this year, like this might be, and this is no stab at previous teams, but this might be like the first year where we've like fully like hung out with all the girls. Like we go out to eat after every game, like we celebrate our wins. So it's like, I mean, you saw the video after NC State, how we're all like doing that in the locker room and stuff like that. Like that's after every single win. And I think that's been such a, a valuable aspect is like, we are having fun right. with it. Where, 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 and that's yeah, helpful. Liz, where did that come from? I mean, because that is unique, right? When, when you do involve everyone, is that just because you know, you guys as, as being veteran players have seen 
other, you know, instances and saying, you know, we're going to make sure that this team is together no matter what? Like, how did that, I guess, come up, the evolution of that relationship and celebrations and, and just good times kind of evolve? Yeah, I think it's two things. One, Coach Brooks has done a great job of recruiting players that fit in our system. Um, just really getting people that all get along, have the same goals in mind, um, like are unselfish. That's a super important uh, aspect of it. But also, I think, you know, with me, Georgia, Kayla, having been here for so long and being the leaders and um, having played God knows how many games combined, probably like 300 something, um, we have, you know, that respect. The younger players respect us and look up to the way that we act, I think. Um, and that trickles down. And um, they're all very, very, uh, not followers, but they look up to us. And I think that they see the success that we've had and they want to have a piece of that also. So they know that they probably need to you know, fit in line a little bit, uh, maybe adopt the attitudes that we've adopted. Um, so, you know, that combination of things has yielded a really, really healthy locker room, like almost shockingly, like I, it sounds like we're dramatic, like cause I feel like people say this and like they probably don't actually mean it. Like there's something going on behind the scenes, but literally nothing. Like, I was literally like the amount of time. And this is no offense. Like, freshmen can be freshmen. They can be annoying, especially when you're like in like a sister. Yes. Like, you are my little sister. No, but tell me why they were all at my house. Like they've been at my house two times in the past week. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why, Georgia. Uh, Coach Brooks told me at shoot around that the freshmen follow you around because you pay for stuff. That might be true. <laughs> uh-huh. But you know what? At least we're building chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Use that NIL money. Put it to if good I use. Tab, I'm, I'll pay the tab. That's <laughs> <laughs> see i like that you guys aren't stingy right you got the nil money you're gonna help out the freshies that's that's just good team chemistry right there uh, for some people who might not realize that you guys i think it's not even close right now you're the best duo in the country specifically with how you play together you lead by the way georgia i don't know if you know the stat you guys lead the country in times that you georgia have assisted liz like there's no other duo that's assisted each other more which i think is really cool so when you guys are running a pick and roll specifically, like the two man game, it, it feels like Georgia, you know where Liz is going to be. What all has gone into that connection for you guys? Actorship <laughs> all the time, like daily. And I, I mean, like nothing is too fancy, nothing's too show pony. You saw Liz put it between the legs. Like they're like genuine looks. That's just not to just be like, look at us go. Like if someone's going to deny me, we're going to do whatever around it. But like, we walk through stuff. And as I said, I mean, it's not like we're doing detrimental stuff to our body, but like we walk through situations, we talk about it. Um, nothing is like, nothing's going to surprise mm -hmm. us in that moment. And honestly, if it does surprise us, I feel like we've been put in those situations so many times that we'll like right. figure it out. Like, especially against UNC, I think there was a couple of times on the left wing where like we were just playing with it, like handoffs, rescreens, post reposts, like, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, we just, just toying with them, toying with them. Liz, when, when people try to, you know, because obviously we know, right? I mean, that stat is fantastic. I mean, people know that you guys have that game. You're going to find each other. When, when people try to overcompensate and stop that, how do you counter? Like, how do you make sure that, hey, you know, we're getting what we need to get and get out of the way? Yeah. Well, Coach Brooks is really good at, like, recognizing exactly what other teams want to do. So if – um, someone plays us a certain way in one game and we maybe, I don't want to say struggle, but maybe don't do our normal thing, then the next day in practice, we'll work on that and work on counters. Um, cause he knows that, you know, other teams are probably going to adopt the same strategy. Mm -hmm. Um, but we've gotten really good at, you know, if somebody, if a guard wants to run over and kind of play three on two with us, then we can hit Kayla or Tilly for a three, or they can dump it down to live for a layup. Um, like he's just, we're so specific in our actions and what we work on in practice, everything is super intentional. Um, and I think that's why, you know, coach Brooks is as incredible of a coach as he is. And that's why we've been able to have the success. And why I think it's been harder to stop, uh, that action than you might expect. I was going to say too, I think a lot of people like will not realize that it's the two man game, but there's like so many more levels to it. Mm -hmm. Liz just wants to make every single shot. So we never get to those other levels. <laughs> I, I promise you. The whole five on the quarter involved. <laughs> She's open too, though. I mean, that's the, like, just from a basketball nerd perspective, I'm not sure I've seen in women's college basketball a pick and pop um, situation where a 6'6 center can knock down anything you ask in the pick and pop. Like, that's, it's impossible to guard because they can't not hedge on Georgia. Like, they can't, what are they supposed to do? So, it's it's brutal because Liz is an absolute menace shooting the rock. Like we know that. Come on, Liz. 
Hey, you know, That's it's funny. Reality. I remember preseason us talking about that. And Liz, you were so excited about the fadeaway, about the three. And you delivered. You, you've delivered all season. It's been awesome. Well, the three were still no, waiting. No, I've a seen them. Bit. I've seen the pictures. I've seen yeah. the pictures. <laughs> Exposed. Exposed. Hashtag exposed. Um, okay, well, speaking of that, I Georgia, you cannot answer here. I want only Liz to answer because I want her to talk about this, and I know she's going to try to be too humble. Liz, at, at, while we're recording this, you still have some games left before Greensboro. While this comes out, you may have already done this, but how are you going to feel when you become the second all-time leading scorer in the ACC? I have no idea what you're talking about. You are going into going into UNC. You were 44 points away from passing Elena Beard. So I think you're probably 10 points away now or 11, 11 from passing Beard to become the second all time leading scorer in the ACC. That's nice. I don't know. <laughs> That's it. Not That's thinking it? about it. Not keep thinking talking. about it. I keep talking about things like that. Like I think in, in 10 years, like yeah. I might look back and be like, Oh, good for you. Like you really did something. <laughs> But like right now, I'm just I don't know. It doesn't really like I just want to win on against Notre Dame. I want to get the regular season yeah. championship. Like that sure. that makes my eyes light up. That yeah. makes my heart race. Like that That's gets cool. me pumped. Um, the other stuff I think I'll brag about to my kids or something. But like until then, it's on like the back that. burner. Georgia, do you have any thoughts on it? <laughs> Legend Re- retire. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Hanging in the rafters. Hanging in the rafters. Thank you, Liz, for attempting to answer because I know it makes you very uncomfortable. Go ahead. <laughs> I love that, though. I mean, I mean, it's such a, a team. People need, need to know. know. Like, hey, and people that's need to job. realize Shout the numbers from the rooftops, this woman is KG. putting up. Let them know. Let them know. But, you know, I, I think it's a great mentality to have, and I think that's why, you know, you guys are so successful. I mean, you just see the relationship, you know, how you guys have, have bounced off each other in this. And, you know, it, it seems like every other question we ask, you go back to Coach Brooks and – you know, just how he gets you mm-hmm. in situations, the relationship that you have. I would love to hear from from your perspective, Georgia, on him not only as a coach but as a man and how he has, you know, fostered this team and, you know, ultimately gotten you guys in this situation. Yeah. I think just at the end of the day, he's super caring and unselfish in all aspects of life. And that kind of, like, you can see that. I think he says it on like interviews and stuff like that. And it's so true. We can go up there and just chat about anything. Like, I think this man knows a little too much about my life and I'm okay with that because it helps like, <laughs> the, the communication on like the court and stuff like that. Like I'm not scared that whatever I say or whatever, whatever idea I have is going to be knocked back in like a, a negative way or like, he's never going to put me down. Like he's going to listen to me. And if I'm talking strange things then he's probably going to process and be like, Hey, like, probably not the best idea let's go this way like <laughs> he's he just like wants the best if you if you're gonna meet him halfway like th- that relationship is gonna flourish i think a lot of people are like different people can be too scared of like getting too close or like opening up too much or like they might be too fearful of saying their actual goals and what they want out mm. of their time here but like if you do that like he's gonna take you and turn you into something great like i'm sure liz and i like we 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 make it so obvious that we want to be the best we can be. We want to take this program to new levels. We want to win. We want our, our post right. college careers to be great. And he knows that. And every single right. day that Liz, did you ever have, us. or did you ever have to have like a conversation with him? And you will be like, coach, I'm ready. Like I'm ready to take it to another level. I'm ready to be the best. Did, did that ever occur? Or was that just like a natural evolution throughout your time? I think it's just like an understood. Like I think, he could just tell from my attitude and work ethic, like I'm not going to not want to be as good as I can. Um, Just because that's like, I feel my nature and most things. Um, And he also is just the kind of coach that like, if like George said, if you meet him halfway, like he'll invest, you meet halfway. And then after that, he'll invest as much as he needs, or sometimes maybe you need to help him. Like it can go both ways after that, after you really gain each other's trust. And we did that early. And then, you know, from then on, it's been, um, just a, a massive investment into into me and my development. Um, like he's really the only coach that's ever worked me out, which is just insane. Yeah. Um, and super rare. But I don't know. He likes to. He likes to have this. I don't know. Not in a bad way, but like have control. I guess like in a good way, and it's like worked. Um, and so no, definitely just a, a natural progression, and I would not have it any other way. People don't understand that generally the head coach does not do individuals 
um, with players, especially yeah. like right before a shoot around before a game. That's just, it's very rare. The skill development at Virginia Tech is, is probably the best in the country. Um, okay, let's finish, guys, because George's got to go to class. What's I know George's got to go what? hit the books. Class, Come So, <laughs> Matt, um, hey, hey, this hey, isn't Clemson. Hey, easy, this is easy, Tech. easy. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. Okay, guys, they're pretty much like the same school anyway. Um, let's look at March. Last year, y'all's March was special. It was iconic. Um, it was really just massive on so many levels. What's the mindset as we head into March, we head into Greensboro, we head into the NCAA tournament. Does the mindset shift at all for you guys? How does the experience from last year help you in, in heading into March? Let's start with Liz. Um, I mean, I think last year prepared us for all the big games. We've already had like so many of those this year. Um, but I don't think we'll be thinking about that too much because of we have that special chemistry and energy within our locker room right now. So I don't think we really need to channel uh, it from anywhere else. I think we have what we need. We have all the right attitudes going on um, from top to bottom. It's just incredible and it's solid. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that alone will be able to take us special places. Yeah. I mean, the mindset does not change. I think it's like right. seriously one game at a time. I mean, at this point, that's all it is because as soon as you lose, it's all over Red Rock, sir. It's, yeah, one game at a time for sure. But as Liz said, like, you know, last year definitely prepped us for like big situations. But I think this year alone, we've had some yeah. pretty big games already. So mm -hmm. I think in terms of like March and stuff like that, like we, we've clearly had experience. It's just up to if we keep playing and producing the way we have. Georgia, what is it about those rims in Greensboro? Because last year <laughs> you had on the blackout shades. Is Do you just, you like the Coliseum? Oh, maybe it's the depth perception or like mm. the random spalding balls we get after using Nike ones the whole year. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I hate maybe it's the fact that we have a person <laughs> It's time on the to line. turn up. Time to turn up. Y'all, this like was so it. much fun. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're jacked up. We're excited. And a uh, big run coming. So uh, keep getting after it. Here with Hannah Hidalgo from Notre Dame, one of those freshmen that's just taking the country by storm. And of course, Hannah, you have your hoops on. I know Notre Dame's been sending out the Hannah hoops, uh, the hoops to different voters. I hear that you wear your hoops all the time, even in shoot around. Is that true? Yeah, I do. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I like the look. So of course I wear them all the time. If you could play in them, would you? Absolutely. Personal. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Overall, let's just talk about your season to date as a freshman coming in and playing like one of the best players in the ACC, one of the best players in the country, how has your freshman year been uh, for you in your eyes? Yeah. So I think my freshman season has been obviously unexpected. Uh, obviously I didn't come into college with, you know, any expectations, but just kind of seeing, you know, how God has blessed me, you know, throughout my whole season, I would just say like, overall, my, my season has truly been like a blessing and like also like a surprise. Like I didn't think coming in here, I would, break all these records and I have people like KD, you know, posting me and tagging me, stuff like that. So I would say it's truly been a blessing. So it's really surprised you that much? You didn't think you'd be able to have this big of an impact? <laughs> I mean, I knew I was going to come here to Notre Dame and, you know, uh, kind of change the dynamic a little bit. But, you know, just kind of seeing it kind of in front of my eyes is just like kind of surreal. I like that. I like the honesty there, Hannah. Well, let's start back at the beginning. You go to Paris. First of all, has anybody ever played their first college basketball game ever in Paris? No, because uh, that was the first game in Paris for, for women's hoops. So you dropped 31 on South Carolina. I know your team loses, and I understand there's a disappointment there, but what were you thinking going into that game that enabled you to do that? Yeah, I I wasn't nervous going into the game, obviously. I, I prayed before every game, and I was just asking the Lord for peace. So just going in, I was really calm, and I think I was just more excited to – play you know play my first collegiate game obviously it was just a, a long summer of just you know having workouts and you know scrimmaging against practice players and against my teammates and stuff like that so I was just super excited to finally play you know my first game and kind of see how we would my teammates and I would like mesh together so I was just more excited than anything well that showed for sure and you bring up scrimmaging practicing all that mm -hmm. I have heard from a few people we heard this at media day I believe that the second you got to Notre Dame, you were you changed practices in that you were talking some trash. You were uh, you were making your voice known defensively, and of course your steals as well. Where does that come from for you? Because you seem sweet off the court. Obviously, there's a faith element to you, which I love. But 
Where does the trash talk come from? Yeah, I would say playing against my brothers. Oh, back, okay. Back, back in the in the backyard and playing against just just boys, and they would mm -hmm. you know kind of you know get a little physical with me and get a little aggressive. So I feel like that that grit kind of came. We would play two on two, and my brothers were kind of going at me, and I would talk trash to them, and they would talk trash back to me. So just that that backcourt fire. I get that. I have a brother as well. There's nobody in the world I'd want to beat more than my brother. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, we talked about the South Carolina game. Fast forward to the UConn game, another iconic game for you this year and a great win for Notre Dame, a win that has Notre Dame still very much in the discussion for a top four national seed, I would say. What were you thinking going into that game? It's alumni night. Yeah. Tarasi's in the building. They're honoring national championship teams. And you just go off. Tell me more about that game. Yeah, I knew it was like a, an, you know, a historic rivalry. And yeah. I knew that, you know, they had all their people kind of coming in. Matter of fact, there was a couple of them that were actually like in our hotel. So oh. it was just like, you know, I was just excited for kind of, you know, the history behind us, you know, playing against each other and kind of going up. And just the atmosphere was just like different. It was just like white out. So everybody was UConn. It was all white everywhere. So it was just like, it was just an exciting an exciting time. Hannah, it feels like I would describe you as a gamer in that when the moment's big, you want to be in it. And especially in that UConn game down the stretch, you made some huge plays. Is that just natural to you? I mean, are you someone that wants the ball towards the end of a game? Uh, I, I, I want what's best. So obviously I just want to make the best decision. So whether that's me having the ball in my hands and making plays and we're scoring or getting my teammates open, I just want to win at the end of the day. But you love the big moments, don't you? I love the big moments. I love those big games and that, that fire. I love it. Talk to me more about your defensive mindset because you are averaging nearly five steals per game. You're putting up steals numbers that we really haven't seen in the modern era. And mm -hmm. as a freshman, you're doing that and you're breaking all sorts of records. Defense can lead to offense. I can tell that defense gets you going. Mm -hmm. um, what do you love about defense so much? Yeah, I, I love getting stops. I feel like when I'm playing on ball defense and, you know, you pluck somebody, you steal the ball, like – it, it kind of takes somebody's heart, kind of just when you're dribbling yeah. the ball and somebody just takes it from me. I feel like it takes heart. And obviously, being so small, of course, growing up, I wasn't able to score over, you know, bigger girls. I didn't know how to finish over big girls like that. So I really took pride in my defense. And growing up, people always told me that, you know, defense was championships. So, uh, you know, of course, I want to compete. And that's kind of where I got my fire. I think that it really translates to my offense when I'm able to get stops and, you know, going the other way on fast breaks. That's really how I get the offense going. You've had some great defensive games this year. There's no doubt about it. If there's someone that you've played so far in college that you've thought, okay, th this may be my toughest cover that I've had so far this year, who would it be? My toughest? I think all the guards that I've played against are, are really solid. Obviously, Fair from Syracuse, she was, mm. she was tough to guard because obviously she's such a great scorer. But even guards who, like, don't score like that. Like, I think guards that I really saw, like the guard from, you know, BC that we just played on Sunday, like she was just like a solid guard and, you know, just, just handled the ball really well. But I think all the guards in the ACC that I've played against are just, you know, tough guards. Great answer. Very diplomatic. I love that. You're, you're wise beyond your years. Okay. Um, but you mentioned all these guards in the ACC. You knew you were coming into the ACC. You've seen Notre Dame have a lot of success in the ACC. How has the ACC been relative to what you expected? Um, I, I know the ACC is, you know, it, it's one of the toughest conferences. And I think, you know, I think the women's game is just growing. So just coming in and seeing how, you know, athletic and how, like, fundamental these girls are, it's something that, you know, I kind of had to adjust to. But, you know, it's it's a, it's a really tough conference. And, you know, every team is different. So, you know, just coming in just with that, you know, killer's mindset in each game. You mentioned the growth of the game. It's it's so fun to see. It's so fun to cover, mm -hmm. especially when you look at the future of this game with you and Juju Watkins and other great freshmen. That we, Madison Booker over at Texas is someone who's been playing really well. Um, so just in general, the game has grown so much. Who did you watch? Who did you love growing up? Because you had access. You could see so many players on TV. Who, who did you love? Growing up, I watched a lot of... What? As I got older is when I really started watching women's college basketball. So I watched I watched Aerie and, and mm. obviously a, at Arizona. Um, yes, at Arizona yeah. watching her her last years. That was that was really fun and like that really 
she really got me into wanting to watch, you know, women's games a lot more because I was really more watching the men's side. But mm. watching her just throughout the season and then obviously, you know, postseason and the tournament and everything and just seeing – how tough she was, how gritty she was. Like, she guarded the best the best player on the court, and she was able to finish over girls 6'5 and just score on all three levels. And I think she was just the toughest guy that I watch. That's a great, great parallel. Her final – Arizona's uh, championship run yes. was incredible. She just blew oh, up. And I, I could see some parallels. I like that, Hannah. That's cool. Um, Notre Dame is known – I've called it point guard you. When you think back to your coach – Neil Ivey, you think back to Skylar Diggins, Lindsey Allen, Jewel Lloyd, the list goes on and on, Olivia Miles, and now you. Did that factor in your, into your decision at all? Do you like that moniker for Notre Dame? Yeah, and obviously it's it's great being able to be coached by someone who's been in my position, who played what I play, and obviously who, who's been where I want to go, of course. So just kind of taking in all the knowledge from Neil is just, it's just great kind of seeing, you know, how her mind thinks. And obviously she's a competitor and she's she's a player's coach. So to be able mm-hmm. to kind of to watch her and just to kind of follow her as she, she leads me has just been something just like amazing. And I would say that throughout my recruitment process, I know it was Guard UL. Somebody had commented on my post. Um, it might have been Skylar. It was just like, you know, Guard University. And this was like when I was like way younger, like on a mm-hmm. really old post. So I, I always remember that. Yes. So Skylar maybe had a, a little bit of a hand in you coming to South Bend. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good one to follow. Um, OK, let's look ahead here, Hannah, and let's talk about March. And let's just talk about Notre Dame in general as as y'all push forward. You have some really big wins. You're pushing to get a top four seed, all of that. Of course, the ACC tournament is going to be big for you in that regard. Give me a few things that Notre Dame has to do to end up in the best position in March. Yeah, I think we just have to play together. I think we have to trust each other and obviously I think we need to we need to have a great start um for every game and play every game like it's our last game in order to make it far. Obviously we have the talent and you know, we have the girls to do so and we just need to, you know, kind of stick together and I think it's it's really going to start on defense for us. Mm-hmm. I think we play really well when we're able to get stops and push the ball in transition and you know, just kind of pressure and make make it uncomfortable. So it's really going to start on defense for us. I'm not surprised you said it would start on defense. I love that. I'm sure that uh, Coach Ivy loves to hear that as well. And then, okay, last thing, let's just talk about the National Freshman of the Year because that, I know you don't, you know, you don't want to play into it. You're just going to play your game and see what happens. But Juju Watkins and you, I think it's a tight race. You have the numbers. Juju's numbers are crazy too. Do you have a relationship with Juju? Have you been able to see her play? and out there on the West Coast? Of course. Um, I played with Juju at USA, and I obviously played against her at, you know, McDonald's American and, and things like that. And obviously this freshman class is just a phenomenal class, and just to kind of see all the girls that I've played against and, you know, played with, just kind of see them do their thing is obviously phenomenal. Obviously seeing, like, Madison Booker and, mm-hmm. you know, Michaela Williams and kind of seeing all these girls just, you know, just, just do what I watched them do in, in high school and them being able to come into the collegiate level and still be able to, you know, play their game. And obviously Juju, she's a phenomenal player. Just the way she's able to use her height and just just score the ball. Obviously, this class is just like something different. And obviously I talked about, you know, the rise of the women's game. And I feel like, you know, we're that next generation to kind of, you know, increase the women's game. And, you know, we're bringing in a lot of viewers and stuff like that. So it's, it's a blessing to be a part of this generation, of course. But this women's game is different. It's different. This class is different. I agree, Hannah. I appreciate your time. Um, Good luck to Notre Dame, and we'll be seeing you down the road. All right, guys, it's time to talk about this ACC Women's Basketball Tournament. We had Georgia A. Moore and Liz Kitley on the pod. We had Hannah Hidalgo, three of the best players in the entire country on our podcast, getting ready to play in this ACC tournament. It's going to be fun. It's going to be electric. I know that the reserve seats are already sold out. College game day is coming to the title game. And, Max, I am recording this with you, my friend, here in (laughs) South Bend International, question mark, airport, as I just finished calling Notre Dame Louisville. So what's up, Max? Well, as we know, the Golden Domers are worldwide, so you have to have an international (laughs) airport to be able to, to really get all across the entire world there. So that makes sense to me. Uh, what makes more sense to me is that we are doing this massive episode today talking about women's basketball, KG. This is so much fun because it's ACC championship. Listen, if it's big enough, 
uh, for us to do a podcast about this thing. It's definitely big enough for game day to come to town. How cool is that? I know you're <laughs> jacked up for game day to be there for the championship game. Yeah, I think that's a really big deal because I think this league is the deepest in the country. And, you know, they're not going to the Big Ten because Fox has that game. So they're not going to go to see Iowa. And, of course, that's going to be exciting. Um, and I think with the SEC, it's probably just going to be South Carolina LSU again. So do you want to go to that? And with the ACC, there's a lot of intrigue. I truly think, Mac, when I look at this tournament and I look at this bracket, I think Virginia Tech could win it. I think NC State could win it. I think Syracuse could win it. I think Notre Dame could win it. And I also think that Duke could be mm. a team that could mm. make a little noise in this tournament. And then you have Louisville and Florida State who have proven they can beat almost anybody. You have North Carolina who has a super talented roster. You yeah. have Miami who plays really well in March. Like the entry with this tournament, I think, is the most interesting top to bottom in the country. Right. Yeah, of course, having Caitlin Clark in your title game, that's going to be really interesting. The Pac-12 is really top-heavy. I think their title game will be fun. But this league and this tournament, you have so many teams that I think can make some noise. So that's why I think College Game Day is going because in the end, this title game, this title game whoever's in it, whether it's Virginia Tech or NC State, they could be playing for a one seed. Other teams could be playing for a top four. There's just a lot at stake in this tournament. Yeah, no, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you just rattled off some of the names there. We don't necessarily have the – bracket yet but we do know the top four virginia tech's going to be the one seed yeah. nc state the two syracuse the three and then notre dame uh the four seed right there and, and i like what you said that they can all win maybe give us a little bit of tidbit uh maybe from those top four teams why can they win it why can each of those teams get a w in this great tournament Right. Well, Virginia Tech, we know what they can do with their duo, the best duo in the country with Liz Kitley and Amor, and they just won it last year, so they're the defending champs. They know what it takes. They have to shoot it well to win this tournament. I think that's a key. For NC State, they're playing really well lately. Beat Wake Forest today. They have so much depth on this team and so many teams, so many players that can score 15 or 17, and they're very good defensively. And if they make the final, there's going to be a lot of red in that building. I think we know that, Mac, with uh, the the proximity. And then Syracuse, when you have De'Asia Fair, like you could go do that thing. And Syracuse yeah. almost beat NC State at NC State in their last game. Plus, sneaky, sneaky thing with Syracuse. They had this Sunday off. So they're going to have mm. so much rest, plus mm -hmm. the double bond going into the quarters and not playing till Friday. So keep an eye on Syracuse, and I really like how they rebound, and they have good depth. And then the other team that I'm really interested to see in this tournament is Notre Dame. Notre Dame is hot. They are peaking at the right time. Their big three is playing really well in Hidalgo, Citron, and Matt Westfeld. Watson was in double figures against Louisville. And I said on the broadcast of Notre Dame Louisville, I think Ken Hidalgo should be national freshman of the year. Mm. I had Southern Cal fans coming at me about Juju. Juju's incredible. I think ideally I would love to see them split the award and have sure. co-national freshman of the year. But Matt, here's the thing with Hannah Hidalgo. There is one freshman ever that has averaged over 20 points per game, five rebounds per game, and mm. five assists per game. Do you know her name? I don't. Caitlin Clark. She's the only freshman to ever of do course. that. And now Hannah of Hidalgo course. is doing that. So wow. I think Hannah Hidalgo with how she's played puts them in a different level as well. So Truly, Mac, and this has not been the case in recent years. I think all four of those top four can win this ACC tournament. Dang, that's amazing. And that, I mean, wild. that's the entry. And that's what is, you know, we've kind of been preaching all year, you for sure, on different platforms about how deep this conference is and, and just the excitement that you really do not know each and every game, you know, who's going to pull it out and, and the way, you know, that the teams are winning the competition right here, in which I hope, you know, that's reflected in the big tournament. Uh, you know, come March and, and we really get a bunch of teams in there and they, you know, make it happen here. Before we go to some stats and some superstars, because you've mentioned them throughout here and kind of your reasons why, I do want to hit our folks with a dark horse. Now, you, you listen, you, you mm. can't say Louisville, you can't say Duke, you can't say Florida State. You already said they might could win. So that's not a dark horse. You already told us about them. Who outside of that, maybe in the second half of the conference here, do you think, hey, if the stars align, they heat up, who knows what could happen? Well, it's a good question, and it's hard to win this tournament, honestly, to win it without a double bye, because that means you have to win four games in four days versus winning three games in three days. The team that has recently gotten to the title game without a double bye is Miami, and Miami is a team that seems to just play well in March. Katie Meyer is a great coach. 
but Miami did just lose to Georgia Tech today in overtime. I think Miami's still in the tournament, in the NCAA tournament. They need probably to win their first game in this ACC tournament mm. to be able to get in. As we're recording this, UNC and Duke are very close at the half. And UNC is an interesting team. They have had struggles. They just lost to Boston College, not a good loss. But this roster is so talented. Mm. So I think North Carolina, depending on their draw, could make some noise as well. I would keep an eye on UNC. But in terms of teams outside of the top four, this Duke team, because of how they play and how they guard, they are not a team that you want to play. Like if you are in the part of the bracket where Duke is, I can <laughs> promise you certain coaches are like, oh, man, you got to oh, be kidding no. me. Because they make it really hard. They yeah. make it really hard. And they're so good defensively. And they're really young, but they're also super talented. So keep an eye on Duke. That's a team that I really think could pull an upset in this tournament somewhere. Yeah. Is there anything, one more before we move on to the superstars, because this, this was intriguing when you were kind of laying that all out there. What's the main difference, I guess, in tournament basketball? Like, obviously, you know, I played back in the day, AAU, you're playing all day, but it, it truly is different from anything that you really do all year. Maybe you do some holiday tournaments or something at the, the beginning of the season. What is that like? And maybe how can a team, maybe a youthful team, like you just said there, catch fire, get inspired, and, and maybe play a little di bit different, and we see these underdog stories? Well, in the, in the first few rounds, you have that desperation factor. You have Miami, who probably needs to win, right? So you know that your season depends on this. And I think that part is interesting. It's, you know, it's a win or go home. But when you get to who's going to actually win the thing, it's who can sustain three games in three days. Hmm. And for some teams who are outside of the top four, four games in four days, who can do it? And that's where I think you get a little concern for Notre Dame and Virginia Tech because they don't have as much depth. Now, Virginia Tech did it last year, and they didn't have as much depth either. But it's really, is there a team that can push through that fatigue on that final day in the fourth quarter of the title game when you're just flat out exhausted? Because there's no other situation where you play three games in three days. Your holiday tournaments, you're most likely playing two games in three days. And in the NCAA tournament, you're, all, you're playing two games in three days, and then you have a break. Mm -hmm. So there's no other situation in college basketball where you play three games <laughs> in three days. So it's about pushing through that, Mac. And just which team is healthier, right? Like some teams have some nagging injuries. I think Notre Dame is really healthy at the right time. Virginia Tech is feeling relatively healthy. So Notre Dame is my team that I'm keeping an eye on from mm. that three games and three days perspective because they really don't have depth, but they're playing so well right now, Mac. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's the most important, peaking at the right time. You know, it's – Tournament mm -hmm. basketball, you lose, you go home. Uh, you win, you keep going. So that's what's always fun to look. Let's talk about some superstars. Maybe if, if people are just stumbling upon this, KG, why should they watch the tournament? You probably just heard from three of them. Uh, but but on top of that, what yeah. can they do great? And who are some other names to watch through you know throughout the time in Greensboro? Okay, here's who you need to watch. If you're if you're mainly watching and listening to our podcast for football, I get it. But women's basketball is just an amazing product right now. And you're going to want to watch this tournament. We have all the games on ACC Network, and then the championship is on ESPN2 on Sunday. So for Virginia Tech, it's George A. Moore and Liz Kitley. We had them on the pod. They're awesome, great personalities, so much fun to watch. Liz Kitley is one of the best players in ACC history, for sure. For NC State, Isaiah James, most improved player in the league, in my opinion, is an absolute bucket getter. And then Saniya Rivers, when she is in double figures and she's aggressive on offense, that's when NC State is at their best. So watch her. DeAsia Fair for Syracuse. She's the fifth all-time leading scorer in the history of the sport, guys. History of the sport. She is a bucket. You got to watch DeAsia Fair. For Notre Dame, Hannah Hidalgo. She is only the second freshman ever to average 25 and 5. She's unreal. For Louisville, they are really a sum of their parts. But I really mm. like Sydney Taylor. For Louisville, if she catches fire, she had seven threes in their win over Georgia Tech. And you know I love shooters, Matt. <laughs> for Duke, there's so many pieces for Duke. Aluchi Okanawa is their really exciting freshman who plays so incredibly hard and will guard the other team's best player. Florida State, Tania Latson, uh, freshman of the year last year. She gets to the rim with ease. For North Carolina, it's Deja Kelly, who is a great mid-range player, just a great player all around. Um, so those are some of the stars that you absolutely – have to watch. And then for Virginia, who's a young, exciting team, Kamora Johnson is their freshman who's been really good. Could Virginia make a little run, especially in the early parts of the tournament? That's a team I'm keeping an eye on as well. So 
Mac, there's just superstars everywhere. There's yeah. superstars everywhere. AZ's yeah. network. Just just keep <laughs> keep your TV on AZ's network from uh, Wednesday through Sunday. That's, that's my all best we do. advice to these that, That's what we're going to do. Well, let the people know a little bit Obviously. more. What are you guys doing? Everybody's going to be there. Are you calling any games? Where can everybody see you more throughout this week and weekend? Yes. So we have coverage literally all day. We start at 1230 on Wednesday to preview the one o'clock game. And then we're on all day, Mac. Like there's no break. <laughs> um, we're on all day on Thursday. I'm calling the morning games on Friday, those first two games, which will be fun. And then pregame postgame on Saturday for the semis and then our pregame show our postgame show for the final on Come ACC on. and on Sunday that's so that's awesome. what you got to do Mac you got to watch um I will tell you this my flight is about to board <laughs> so I think I I'm just heard him calling ahead. your name you got to go you got to get out of here <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give my champion of this ACC tournament oh gosh and don't break any hearts is, do not break any hearts no, 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 on no. this podcast <laughs> Virginia Tech and Notre Dame are on the same side of the bracket. So I think that semifinal is going to be electric. I think we get a Virginia Tech NC State final, mm. which is going to be awesome. And I think Virginia Tech wins it. I think that Notre Dame loss is a wake up call for them to, to get extremely focused. And I think Georgia Amor is going to play like she did in March last year. So yeah. give me the Hokies, um, but just keep an eye because I think, like I said, I think all any of those top four teams could actually win this thing. It's going to yeah. be awesome. I can't wait. Can't wait to watch it. We'll be checking you out all week, all weekend. We need you guys to hang out with us here. We need you to go subscribe, jump on this channel. We appreciate you guys. Uh, but until next time, as KG is sprinting to the gate, we'll see y'all.